Hey, welcome back to Connection Point Studies. We are really glad to have you here. This is a great time. We've kind of taken a play off of uh, the uh, family business. Uh, you, you're, you were raised in the family business, weren't they? What, what, what did your folks do? Um, my parents uh, had grapes, and they planted grapes commercially, and so we, yeah, we were in the grape business. They still, still have it, right? Uh -huh. they, they still have a family business. Yes. So we're, we're kind of making a play off of that, and we've talked about how to find a good partner, and this week we're talking about the employees, and uh, we've got a guest with us here today, his name's Larry, if you don't know Pastor Larry, <clears throat> we picked him because he has a whole bunch of kids at all kinds of stages of life, right? I do, I have four kids, and they're from 20, almost 29 to 2, 20, and so you have perfect advice for everybody, right? You know, I try not to give a lot of kids <laughs> advice, I think, I think it's part of, every kid's different. Yeah. And you just got to do the best you can as a parent. You know, truthfully, what we're going to be doing, Larry, is sharing from our heart. We're not perfect dads or anything, but as we share a little bit, I think we will be able to help people in their own views on how to raise their kids. And that's really what the study's about. Now, we've got a warm-up question for them today. Uh, why don't you give them the warm-up question, Larry? Okay, here's the warm-up question. Can you remember a time when you were a kid that you ran away from home? There might even be some stories that you have of your own kids running away from home. And then before you come back, read Luke chapter 2, verses 39 through 52, and be ready to talk about it. Larry, uh, did you ever run away from home? I think so. I, I can remember threatening. I, I don't know how far I actually made it. I but, wanted to, but yeah, I don't think I, did. I ever did. Yeah. I, Actually, I think I hid in the house one time and said I ran away. Yeah, I think I packed the little, little hobo thing, you know, and I am pretty sure he did, yeah. That, that was good. That's good. Well, I, I wish I was in the corner hearing some of these answers and all this. When, when we look at the Scripture, we had him read the Scripture in Luke. It almost seems like they're running away from home, like Jesus kind of ran away from his family, or it seems like he moved away. And so we need to dig into the Scripture a little bit more to understand it. So what we're going to ask them to do, we're going to ask people to do, is look at this Scripture. And in the process of looking at the story of Jesus when he was a kid, I think we'll learn a little bit about how to raise our own kids a little bit. So we've got a, a question for them to begin with. Um, why, why don't you ask that question? What do you think the significance of the Passover was? What was that Passover feast about? And uh, then let's talk about the tradition for Jesus and his parents. What was significant about this tradition? Right. And this may mean that some of you have to be a little bit of a biblical scholar to answer that. So hopefully somebody in your group will step up and help answer that question. And we'll talk about it. Okay, so Larry, the, the Passover was uh, a feast, right? A, a celebration. In fact, uh, what do we do now on the Passover? Passover. Easter. Easter, right. Yeah, so it's a celebration of His resurrection. And, now, we and don't the do death. the same traditions We as don't they do did. the same traditions, you're right. So the Passover was a celebration of, of uh, the people of Israel being liberated from slavery, and they would sacrifice a lamb, put some blood on the door, and they, they had a whole series of things, and they had a whole meal that they celebrated around. But every male was required to go to Jerusalem that possibly could go to Jerusalem. And was there an age? There was an age, actually, that... Yeah. So, uh, as I think you know, uh, a kid became an adult at age 12. So this was significant to Jesus, and what do you think the significance was? Uh, For him to go, this was yeah. his first Passover to go to? I, well, I, he, he, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, he had, he had gotten to that age, obviously, where he was old. able to attend Passover. So, so the significance of this is it's the first time as an adult. Now, you have adult kids, right? I do. Yeah, so this will be fun talking about how Jesus is becoming an adult at age 12. And we'll go from there. Now, we have a second question for them to dig in a little bit deeper. Why would Jesus have so easily gotten left behind? Okay, so Jesus would have been left behind. Uh, well, what do you think the answer to that is? Well, I, I don't know exactly why. I, mean, I guess it probably was a busy time, and they probably didn't pay attention to who all was around. But yeah. my kids disappear pretty quickly. My Did little they? ones, <laughs> when we're shopping, they'll hide in the clothes, and they're just gone. Well, honestly, do you feel uh, obligated to your older kids to know where they are at all times? 
you know, I think when they, when they eventually get older, you, you, you don't worry as much, but you're still concerned for them. You're, you're concerned for you're them. You're always going to be a parent. Right, but I think for, in reality, for Jesus, this time was a time where, for the first time, the parents said, okay, you're an adult, you act like an adult, this is what our schedule is, this is where we're going, this is your responsibility. So I think for Jesus to get lost just meant that they had given him a bit of independence and freedom at this time in their life. Now, let's dig in a little bit deeper the story. What, what's the next question that we have for them? How do you think Mary and Joseph felt when they found out that uh, Jesus was there in the temple teaching the rabbis? In the court. In the court, yeah. It's just amazing. Amazing story. So when the parents showed back up, and here's Jesus teaching in the court, I, I'm curious, do you think they were a little proud? I, I wonder what people said. I would think I would be. I mean, yeah. if you see your, your kid influencing these older people, I think I, it would be awesome. Don't, don't you think, though, that they had to overcome a little bit of anger after traveling two days back, and now they're really frustrated, and now they see Jesus when they really want to be angry, but maybe deep in their heart they're kind of proud of him? I, uh, think, I think so, yeah. I, I do, too. How could you go two days and not notice your kid's going? Yeah. It's just amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we want you to zero in on one verse because I think this is the crux of all the verses in this, uh, in this Scripture, and that's verse 49. And just for a couple of minutes, I want you to ask as a group, what do you think the significance to verse 49 is? All right, so Larry, uh, verse 49 is pretty powerful. In fact, let's just read it. It says, Didn't you know I must be about my father's business? Why do you think that's so significant? Well, we, we talked earlier about Jesus being at the age where he now was an adult, considered an adult by the Jewish custom. So I think this is, this is really beginning to, to say that, that he has come into his own faith. Hmm. He is beginning to, to be about God's business. He's no longer just following after his parents' religion or his parents' faith, but he's developed his own faith. In, in fact, I'd say it's even one step further. And we, this is where we need to begin to apply it to our own life, Larry. You have older kids. Uh, I have older kids. There's, there's a success for me has always been when I bring my kids along far enough to where they can give that answer uh, to be about my father's business. It's not about my business anymore. It's about the Heavenly Father's business. Um, how much influence do you have over your older kids? It's kind of interesting. I, I even this last week had a conversation with my, my three-year-old where I say, you don't have a choice because I choose for you. You're a child and I'm your parent and so I choose for you. But as your children get older, eventually you begin to need, you give, give them the responsibility right. of making decisions. And now with my adult children, I, I watch them and I, I hope that the investment I've made in their lives influence their decisions. Right. And their decisions about faith, um, certainly I've had an influence there, but, but their faith has to be their own faith. To me, our job is to help them to that place in faith where they switch their, their um, responsibility to the Heavenly Father. That's, that's right. really critical. So uh, we have another question here that we want them to look at. Um, why don't you give them this question? This is the first time that we see Jesus as a teacher leader but if we look at this passage uh, in the earthly light, does Jesus seem disrespectful to his family? Yeah, he's a little disrespectful. In my opinion, it seems like he's a little disrespectful, don't you think? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you can kind of say that, but, but Jesus is perfect, so mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of hard to, to go yeah. there. And I, I think it's so hard for us to understand that at age 12, he actually is asserting his adulthood. And it just seems, it's like there's this time when we uh, see a kid finally grow up and it's hard to let go of him. And it seems like that's what happened here. Which brings me to the last question. Here's what we want you to do in this last question. And this is a good time for you to discuss as a whole group. Um, what we want you to think about is, how do you encourage your kids to grow in wisdom and stature? There's a verse here that says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. And as we've talked about today, our goal is to help people make Him the Heavenly Father 
uh, of their life so that they will respond to it. And so take a little bit of time as a group and talk about how are you encouraging your kids to grow in wisdom and in stature, and how are you letting them come to their own faith And in what way are you encouraging that? So take a little bit of time, share around, and then I want you to pray together and take a little bit of time to encourage each other, pray for each other's kids, and we will see you next week at Connection Point Studies.